Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Legends of the American Frontier is a game that is just so beautiful to look at. The artwork in this game, the care that went into it is just phenomenal. Now, I do have some issues with the quality of the cards in the game, so be it. But everything else, just the way it looks, the beauty of it, the colors that were used, this is a game that will just knock your socks off with beauty. And how it didn't win Best Art or Best Looking Game of the Year is just beyond me. Now, my first introduction to this game was at Prototype Con a year ago. And Richard Lanius himself was playing this. And I didn't get in the game. Pedro got into it. If you watch this, you know that Pedro got to play this game without me. But ever since then, I really, really wanted to try this out. What is this? Okay, well, this is a storytelling game. And if you watch any of my reviews or read any of my reviews in the past, your storytelling games are not a huge thing that I like. I always wish there was more game involved. Well, this is a storytelling game with an actual game. Yes. So... You can actually play this game and ditch all the storytelling elements, which I've actually done, probably to the detriment of the game, but you can do it. And I have people who really like the storytelling element, and we can do that too. There's an optional rule at the end of the game where whoever tells the best story, all the players will vote, will get additional points. It's optional. I normally play without that because it's just too subjective. So what do you have here? you got a game that has a lot of moving parts. And I, I don't know why, but this game is very hard to teach, or at least hard to teach. I've had a hard time getting people to comprehend it without moving the parts along and saying, okay, let's get through a turn. I think you'll pick it up, and after a couple rounds, people have. I don't know why, because at the end of the day, you're only matching icons by cards that you have to play. It just seems like there's a few fiddly rules that are, that are included to make it work. But don't let that, don't please don't let that turn you away from this game. This is a really fun little neat game. And it, Rich, what Richard Lanius has been able to do with storytelling games here is phenomenal. Every card, every reward you get adds to the story of your life. So you start the game with your upbringing and you kind of draft these cards. And then you go into the actual game where you're earning things uh, by helping on missions and group missions and solo missions and earning things. And that starts to tell the story of your character. And at the end of the game, you can kind of see the life points of your character and you can embellish that with stories. And it's really, really, really fun. Okay, this isn't one of my favorite games of all time. I think it might go up in my book just because of the uniqueness and how they actually made a storytelling game work for a chain. It's not arbitrary. There's a game going on. With that said, there's a lot of luck in this game. A lot. Hardly ever... Did we have enough cards in our hand and the ability to play those to actually win on a challenge? It always came down to that Destiny deck where you're drawing an additional card. It's fine, but sometimes it just became who drew the random card the best. Okay, a lot of times it came down to who drew the random card the best. But I think you need to take that into consideration when you're choosing which area to go to and who's likely to go there. I also think that as gamers, or at least my gaming group, we didn't rest enough. So when you rest, you can draw four cards. It's your entire turn, but you draw four cards, and you can kind of set your deck up and discard down to seven and, and do that. I don't feel like enough of that was done. I don't think it was needed. With a Destiny deck, I normally pass something or didn't. And, I mean, there's some cards when you feel it's like you lose all of your stuff. Well, that stinks. Um, but I think that's what the game is going for. It's not meant to be a very in-depth strategic game. With that said, it's not a short game either. You know, this game can go an hour and a half to two hours with quite a bit of luck. So, if I'm being completely honest, I think the luck factor is too high for how long this game is. With that said, I think the game is really fun. And it's almost worth an endeavor. And I would not say that most of the time. Most of the time, if the luck is too high with how long the game goes on, I'm like, pass, get out of here, don't need it, blah, 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 move on. But with... This one, I just felt like I was having fun. I liked the story I was building, and I liked trying to do it. Um, 
And I don't know how to explain it other than say I thought the time investment was worth what I got out of it. And I think most people would look at this or and say, with this amount of luck, you're writing it seven luck and it took you two hours that that's too much luck for that time period, but it's fun and I'm having a good time and it looks beautiful and I'm just enjoying it. So I really wanted to point that out in case you hear about the luck factor because it is there and I think it is quite high. With that said, I think you can get better at this game. I think with the right amount of resting and building your deck and Lady Luck being on your side, I think you can definitely get better at this game. So I am going to recommend Legends of the American Frontier. I really like this game. If you're looking for a storytelling game, this is it. This is it, okay? Don't 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 be fooled by anything else. Try this one or buy it. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's not like I do some games as instant buy. I don't think so. I think you're going to have to like the character in this game. I think you're going to have to like the time period of this game and the history of this game. I don't think this game is for everybody. So what I'm going to recommend you to do is not run out and purchase it, but to try this game. Watch the video of it. See if it's something that you would like and then purchase it rather than running out and just getting it. I really do adore this game. I don't foresee any reason why I would get rid of it, uh, although I think at times it would be hard for me to find people to play it with. It's going to be a keeper for me. Here are the components for Legends of the American Frontier. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. I mean, this is just magnificent. Magnificent. You're going to get a gigantic, almost unusable player aid. There's only one. But this thing is so big, you're better off just using the rule book that comes with it. You're going to get a pretty interesting rule book. Very colorful. Shows everything you need to go through it. I'm not crazy about this rule book, but it is what it is. You're going to get a number of this. Now, this one has the True Grit expansion into it, so I'll just kind of show you everything that came with mine. You're going to get these player boards, which are pretty good. You're going to be putting all of this together yourself. Uh, these are different characters, and these will just show you what your skills are in each one. And you have quite a few of these. Each one has a special power listed on it. Uh, this does not come with it. This is something I added just to keep my components in. But you're going to get a number of these little small cardboard chits. They're really too small for me with my fingers. But there's a few different kinds in there. Um, you're going to get these Fate Wills that will come out. And they are pretty solid cardboard. Um, not too bad. You can see the wording on it. It's a little small if you're sitting across the board from someone. Now, you'll be using a lot of those in kind of um shuffling them up mine also came with and i just bought this one nothing special but it came with these nice grit tokens that are metal i i, I suggest they don't come in every package because mine had the nice ones and the not so nice ones but uh here's your first player marker that you'll be moving around beautiful beautiful artwork on this just just magnificent. these are going to be the skill cards that come with it and these are just going to be numbers some of them will have the icons on it uh, the artwork is nice. You're going to have some powers written on them that you'll be doing that you'll need to read throughout the game. Uh, but they're very easy to use. Uh, they're not the best quality. Um, they don't feel that great. I feel like they do need to be probably sleeved if you're going to keep this game for a while. These tokens right here are going to represent the characters that you'll be playing. Um, you can see the pictures of the different characters on them. They're fairly thick even though you're not using them all that much. For each character, you will get a set of four cards that will be, would have them on the back with the great artwork. And then you have the three locations and your rest card. And you'll be playing these face down there in the game. They do get quite a bit of work, but you'll never be shuffling these. There's uh, three different locations that you can go to, which is some of the most beautiful back artworks ever. If you do sleeve these, you're going to want clear ones on the back. Otherwise, really, this is kind of a jumbled mess, and I'll teach you how to play this in the flow of the game. But you can see just a lot of icons, scoring points, a lot of symbols on these things. It isn't as hard as perhaps that it might look, but these are going to be the cards that you're going to get if you fail. There's, there's uh, six different ones that all do different things, and I'll show this in the flow of the play. But there's quite a bit of these if you fail, so there's a lot of variety. But you can see a lot of them are going to be like losing things, so discard all of those and th these cards are a little bit more simple they're usually worth negative victory points some of them so be careful of those once again the card quality isn't isn't great now these are the skill cards that you'll be trying to buy throughout the game to give you victory points you only use a certain number of these but you can just see the magnificent artwork these are the hardship cards 
usually if something goes bad, they're just, just wonderful, wonderful to look at. The backs of the cards just have some of the greatest art I've ever seen. These are your upbringing cards that will kind of get you started with your symbols. All the cards tell you a little bit of story. Orphaned at an early age, but with substantial inheritance. That's why you're good at capitalism. And you'll have these legacy cards, which will be the cards that you're getting victory points for at the end of the game. Each one has some unique artwork at the bottom of it. So just, just. Here is the game board for the game. Uh, you don't really use it for a whole lot except for to hold the cards um, that you'll be playing on. Uh, it, it You didn't really need it, but it is a nice little addition. It's very nice. The artwork is on a beautiful. Got plenty of room on here, and it kind of sets up and shows you where things are. The rules are going to be a little bit of a stumbling block here in this game. I don't think these are mechanisms that we've seen a lot. There's a lot of extra little rules. I don't think the rules were organized very well. Your mileage may vary. I think the rule book's a little bit of a stumbling block. I think you're going to need to watch some videos on this, maybe even play through a couple rounds. With that said, teaching the game is a little bit difficult. I think people need to visually see this one. It's a little bit harder to um, visualize. Also, you're drafting your upbringing at the beginning of the game, and I don't think you're going to have a grasp on how important that's going to be later. So, I'd almost say the first time, just don't worry about the drafting. Hand out some random cards. Let's go through a couple rounds and then reset and play the game. I'm going to talk about the flow of the game here. There's quite a bit going on, and I don't know that you're going to get it all from a video or the rule book. Um, it's just a very, very complicated. The first thing you're going to do is these upbringing cards, okay? And this is going to be kind of your childhood up to when you become a full-fledged mature adult. And they're going to do different things. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw five of these to start the game. Every player is going to get five, and you're going to draft these. You're going to pick one... And and place it down and keep it and pass it on and somebody will bring another one back to you and you'll pick another one but let me just kind of show you what some of these do these are going to be your your stats really on your guy so if you are playing let's get you daniel um if you're playing him and the game starts all of your skills are at zero okay so the way you start out with something different there's six different areas here that you're going to have is you're going to have your upbringing cards. And after you draft these, you're going to end up with five cards, okay? So what you would do is, if you got... Now, when you start the game out, none of your stats can ever be above four. If you draft cards that give you over four, too bad you shouldn't have drafted it. So my capitalism will move up to four, and I would just move that here. My pioneering would move up to three, or what they call uh, frontier. I would move my providence up to two, I would get a grit, and then I would get this power for the remainder of the game. It's still more complicated. May switch a fate wheel for a random one at the start, so be it. And then I would get two fright. And then I would get that grit, one of these, from this card. Okay? And then the way it's kind of played out, you'll set these aside like this, and this will become your story. So, born into a wealthy shipping family from Boston, I became a blood brother to the son of an Indian chief. I promised Ma to abide by the good book. Being rambunctious, it was like a guardian angel was watching over me. At eight years old, I left home to become a drummer in a continental army. So this upbringing, these stats that I got, have a story associated with it, which will be important to know the game. And for now, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make this a story game, which it really is, maybe start out at this point and you would just kind of read this out loud. Put it in whatever order you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, but this is your upbringing. So now you're a full-fledged adult at this point in the game. Before I show you how you play the game, I want to show you what you're trying to do. So at the end of the game, when you're ready to score, you will give out these legacy cards, okay? And they will do different things. So uh, whoever has the most fame reward cards, reward cards with this symbol, which are these. These are your reward cards right here. Whoever has the most of, in this deck will get this card, which will give you three victory points at the end of the game and a little story there. For this one, whoever has the most back east cards, which is a place on the board, back east, frontier, and far west. And this one, whoever has the most happiness cards, which one of the rewards, the wealth reward, the frontier. So each of these spaces, whoever has the most here, 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 most of these, most of these, most of these, most of these will get points. Then whoever has the most adventure cards overall will get the big one, which is worth five victory points. And they're all worth different numbers. And you, this is free knowledge of what you're trying to obtain. And what you'll be doing to get these is each of these will be flipped over. 
and you can see each card has a requirement at the top. So I'm just going to pull one at random just to kind of show you what's going on. So if you get three uh, blue tiles and a purple one, then you can obtain this card on your turn. It will give you one victory point into the game. And because uh, you're a wilderness scout, you gain one point of uh, fight and frontier. And you also get the storyline, Famous Scout and Explorer of the Great Wilderness of America. Let me show you another one. If you were to get two of these chits and one blue one, you can trade it in for a decorated war hero. You gain one point of personality and one victory point at the end of the game. And decorated war hero and commander of the local militia will be part of your story. So that's just kind of what you're trying to do. So what you're really trying to do is score victory points. And mostly you're going to do that by getting these chits that match these colors. And here... The purple ones, once again, you would need three purple chits because you married your childhood sweetheart. The game of the game, every two not purple not counted in the final score becomes one victory point. The purple ones usually are happiness. They're kind of in-game scoring. These other ones kind of help you with your stats for the most part. So you're going to get these chits to turn in for these cards, which will give you victory points. Well, how do you do that? Let's talk about that. The way you get these chits is you go to back east, frontier, or far west. When you set up the game, you're going to put a number of these into play, eight. So you'll be taking four of these out. I'm just going to kind of show you really quickly. So what you would do is you put one on back east, you'd put one frontier card out in the frontier, and you would put one far east, far west rather, that would be out. You're also going to put three of these fate wheels out, one here, one here and one here. Now the way they work is a little bit different is that in back east, because you're closer and you have that information, it's always flipped over. And this one will tell you that when you're trying to obtain that one, luck is not treated as trump. Well in this one, you don't get to know what fate is unless the card ages here, which I'll get to in a minute, or you already go on adventure. Because once you want to adventure, you get to flip that off. Far west, because there's less information known, you actually don't get to know what it is unless it ages twice or you go on the adventure and just kind of randomly know what is there. Okay, And what you're trying to do on these, so let me show you a couple of these. So this is a single solo adventure. Only one person is going to win this versus this one that is group. So in this one, somebody is trying to obtain 13 fight. And in this one, you're trying to get 20 book. Now normally the group ones are going to be much larger and much harder to obtain. So what you're going to be trying to do is if you go to this location, let's choose this one for example, you would play, you get these skill cards, and you're going to have a hand of seven each turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what you would do is you would try to play a fight card from your hand. I'm just going to give you a very basic understanding, then I'm going to add some rules of this. Because we're trying to get 13, I would play this, which is a four, and then I could add my fight skill to it. And then what you'll do is you'll draw the top card of the deck and you get to add this score to it. If it matches the trump that you're trying to get, and trump is just whatever icon is showing, in this case the fight, had this matched, I would have got to draw another card. But I didn't. I got this. So 12 plus my score is 14. Great. I only needed 13, so I passed this. When I pass this, I would get two red chits or a red and a blue chit. But I would also have to take one of these hardship cards. Now these hardship cards can do bad things or good things. In this case, poor at farming, failed at business, and bewildered by life in general. Discard entire hand of skill cards and redraw the hand limit. That can be very devastating when you've been building your hand limit up. So that's kind of how it works. Um, let me add something else. Well, in this case, luck. Well, in this case, because of the fate will, I cannot use luck as trump. Let's talk about that for a second. So, to make this a little bit more complicated, when I play a card, you can play a card for the Bullseye or American Ingenuity, which is this brown. If you play this brown, then I can play other cards. So let's say I had a luck card. A luck card is any card with a horseshoe. If you look, it matches the American Ingenuity. Now, if I had another uh, firearm like this, a fight card that had a brown on it, I could play two of those, or in this case, a luck card. So now I got seven, right? But this would have prevented me from playing it because I can't play luck as Trump. But let's for a moment just pretend like that isn't there. Then I would add my score, which is two. So seven plus uh, two is nine, plus the top of the deck is eight. Then I would pass. Um, it, because I couldn't play the luck there, then it would have went back. So that's what you can do with the ingenuity cards. Now, 
when you have a card that has a bullseye on it, that's the only card that you can play. And you can see there's quite a few, and the much more powerful ones include the bullseye. So you even have some wild cards that can be any type you want. But these American Ingenuities that are lower are nice because you can kind of piece them together. Discard when they adventure in the frontier or Fort Western draw. So they also have some powers on them, which can be nice. So that's kind of how you beat the board. Now, with the group ones, more than one person can go there. And if more than one person goes and tries to beat it, then you will take turns choosing. Like you might want this plus one skill, red, blue, and a purple, and somebody else might pick the gray. Don't forget the card is a reward of itself because it's worth four victory points. So maybe the first player would take the card, and the second player would take this goodie, and then the third person who helped get that and the hardship would be last. So on a turn, what you're going to do is you're going to have seven of those skill cards that you'll have in your hand, and you're going to have your, your little player cards that you're going to have. And each card is going to say one of the locations. Let me take the rest aside for a second. So you're going to have Far West, Frontier, and Back East. If you want to go Back East, you'll play this card face down and on your turn. So I'm just going to place it there. And then you would place your little Chet out in the Back East, representing that's where you went. You always take care of Back East first, then Frontier, and Far West. So that card play is just because you can bluff with people. You can tell them, I'm going to go to Frontier and help you. So they go there and you're like, nah, I'm with the Back East instead and screw them over knowing they're going to fail this. Well, why do you want people to fail things? Because if you look at the failure on here, you will have to draw a failure card, okay? And when you draw failure cards, that means bad things happen. And there's different types of failure cards. These are if you fail Providence one and, and blah, 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 capitalism. But let me show you a couple of these. So... Unlucky at cards. You falsely believe your business acumen will help you in games of chance. You are addicted to game, but notoriously bad at poker. You lose all your wealth. And these are also sometimes worth negative victory points. So here's one. Sued by a business partner. A partnership ends poorly. Give any three of these tokens to one other player. If you don't have them, you don't have to give them up. But these can be kind of brutal. Here's a snowed in. Uh, you are in high country too long, get snowed in. Discard your hand and draw five new. You can only choose rest on your next action. You are shunned by the Ch Choctaw Indians. You are tested for bravery but fail. They mark you and send you out in shame. So you minus one to your frontiersmen. Keep in mind it's worth a negative victory point. Here's a frostbite to discard all of these. So these can be very timely. And you can get really screwed over by luck with that if you fail one of these. So that's going to be the main point of the game. Is you're going to be trying to beat these to get those icons to buy these cards. And at the end of the round you'll have an opportunity to buy these. And then you will draw back up to seven. That's fairly much the game. At the end of the round, any cards that failed, so, so let's say somebody failed this one, it would immediately age. But at the end of the round, every card would age. Remember, if it goes to two here, then this one would be flipped over, and this one would age one. And then if they age off the board, for example, then it would come off and a new card would come out. So there'd only be one card in each location. I hope that I've done a good job explaining that. There are some options at the end of the game to go through your story for your character and, and award somebody a bonus points for telling the best story. But for the most part, that's Legends of the American Frontier. You're going to secretly choose a location to send your character out to. And then once you're there, you're going to spend your skill cards to try to beat the number that's required. And if you beat that number, keeping in mind you always have to use the trump icon that's used, uh, shown, then you'll be able to get the reward. Now, if more than one person, let's say, gets the solo, then whoever's the highest wins, and only one person can do so. The only action I didn't tell you about was the rest action. Let's go through that for a second. So if you decide to rest instead of going to a location and trying to beat it, uh, you can draw four cards or get a grit. What's good about having this grit is that, remember how I told you the Destiny deck will draw one that will add to your card. If you want to give up one of your grit, you can discard the card that was drawn and draw a new one. And that can be very powerful if you need to get a high card and you're just not getting it. Also, at any point in the game that you have to take something bad, a hardship or one of the negative cards, you give up two grit to not have the penalty affected on you. That can be very powerful. So this is your opportunity to get more grit as opposed to some of the rewards that will give you grit. The next thing you do is, is you discard down to your hand side. And you can trade any two of your rewards for one. So if you have a blue and a red, you give it up for a wealth. This can be very important for you to try to get the right combination because they're not really worth anything unless you trade them in for cards. So that can be a good opportunity to do that. 
You can also buy a reward card. This will be the opportunity when you're resting, maybe to sneak in and get one of these. Because everybody can buy them at the end of the round in turn order. But if you're resting on your turn, if you have the right combination, you can buy these reward cards before everybody else. And now let me say this. You are going to need to rest and draw cards. Because to beat some of these, you're going to need the right combination of cards. Like I said, the American Ingenuities are nice because they can build off each other. So you might want to draw four and discard down to seven and keep the ones you need to beat the locations that you're looking for next time. Uh, so that would be a little preparation phase. The game will end when there's you can't put a card in a location or two of these reward piles are empty. That is a lot of information. Legends of American Frontier is a big game. Really, if you can grasp the card play to beat these cards, that's all that really matters. If you can understand this part and how you beat it by playing the skill cards, after that, you're just choosing what chits you want to turn in to get this. Not that complicated, but it feels like a lot. And when I explain it to you today, it feels like a lot. Hopefully one day I'll be able to do a playthrough of this. But for now, that's the Legends of the American Frontier. Who should buy this game? If you're looking for a storytelling game, this is it. With that said, I think storytelling, you're going to have to like this American Frontier, Wild Wild West type setting. I would say try this game before you buy it. I really like it. I think it's going to latch on a lot of people. I just hesitate to tell you to spend this kind of money, 50 bucks on a game, and it might not be something you like. Lots of luck. Um, very good storytelling. There are decisions to be made. You need to play off the other players, ask for help, screw people over. All that's in there, bluffing and backstabbing and all that. Um, but I'm going to say check this one out. Uh, definitely put this on your to play list. Do not let this one go by. If you don't like storytelling games, you can totally play the game without it and just kind of is there. Or it can be as big a part of the game as you want it to be. It's going to be a keeper for me. Try this one out and don't miss it. I know this one's hard to find, but check this one out. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.